It has been a rough month for UNLV President Dr. Len Jessup. Reports surfaced two weeks ago that Jessup was told in January to quit or be fired. Jessup says that report was misleading, but he admits he will be looking for a new job anyway. His potential departure has already cost UNLV millions of dollars that would have gone to build a new medical school. George Napa, the I-team, is here now to help sort it out. You know, uh, turmoil and skullduggery are not strangers to our Nevada's higher education system. Our state is one of the few in the nation where university regent is an elected position. Some regents tend to use the job as springboards to higher office, and they immerse themselves in the minutia of running our universities. Dr. Len Jessup doesn't want to leave UNLV, so who is behind the move to get rid of him? I resent being used as the excuse to turn against him and to try to terminate him. Chris Engelstead McGarry is usually happy when she gives away money. The Engelstead Family Foundation has dished out more than $200 million to worthy causes. Late last year, it decided to donate $14 million to help build the new UNLV Medical School on the condition that UNLV President Len Jessup and med school dean Dr. Barbara Atkinson remain on the job. There's a one-word reason the foundation hasn't previously donated to UNLV, Regents. We didn't like the system in place. We didn't like the institution with the Board of Regents. And we didn't want to just hand them the money. Engelstad says Nevada's Board of Regents has a long history of meddling and micromanaging, and she wanted to make certain that money donated for the med school would actually be spent on the med school. So her attorney drafted an agreement which specified the money could be rescinded if Jessup and Atkinson were no longer in charge. Is it out of the ordinary? Not at all. Either in, you, you donate to a, a lot of This is what things. we do all day, every day. And you routinely will express your preference of how the money is used. Well, not only a preference, but you want to have some sustainability and accountability, and you want to hand your money over to people who are going to be good stewards. If there's any, I mean, we haven't done this gift before, Len, because we didn't think that they were good stewards. Charitable gifts to universities often come with strings attached. Donors want their names on a building or to fund particular programs. Dr. Atkinson has been the dean of three medical schools and says it is not unusual. Um, but having them specified in a gift uh, memo um, is very common in my experience. And having it expressed that I want um, the leadership to continue while the building is being built, in this case, um, is not an unusual criteria. But earlier this month, after the Nevada Independent reported that Jessup was being shown the door, the agreement morphed into a political football. No one was willing to say on the record why Jessup was being forced out, though there was plenty of scuttlebutt. Engelstadt says this has regent fingerprints all over it. No, the regents cost the university $14 million, specifically the regents did. We were very clear that we would rescind the gift if the management changed. Management changed, and we found out through the newspaper. So since no other communication has happened, we did what we said we would do, and we rescinded the gift. After she rescinded the $14 million gift, the next media salvo accused Jessup of orchestrating the whole thing to save his job. But the parties involved say the agreement was reached two months before Jessup received the warning about his job performance. The news about the gift was announced to the regents by Jessup in late November 2017. The foundation attached the strings, not Jessup. It was never discussed. It was sent over with our signatures on it, and it landed on his desk and um, he preferred not to be named. So he did not lobby you to put that in there? Absolutely not. When he saw his name in the agreement, Jessup asked the foundation to take it out. The agreement was rewritten without the names, but was still conditional based on retaining current management. Since then, Engelstad says, no one from the university has called to ask her to reconsider, and other major donors are following her lead. The donors think this is the handiwork of a few regents who, behind closed doors, decided to oust Jessup without going through a formal and public review. They don't want to have any meetings face-to-face, -face, but they clearly have meetings amongst 
themselves, which I think would be in violation of the open meeting law. I'm sorry that it's President Jessup. I'm sorry that this is the platform that they've decided to use as a springboard for higher office. But, you know, maybe it is necessary to expose a really sick, broken system that needs to be repaired, and it doesn't work. Dr. Jessup still has more than two years to go on a five-year contract, but because of what he says are problems in the current leadership structure, it looks like he'll be looking at other options. He was scheduled to have a formal job review in June. Last week, the university chancellor created a new position, chief operating officer for UNLV. Nevada is one of only two states in the country with elected regents, and in the days ahead, we will pursue further issues related to the system. Looking forward to those follow-ups. Thanks, Thank George. Thanks, George. Closed without warning. Still ahead of the